This video is brought to you by my kind Patreon supporters and channel members. If you enjoy my content and seek to take your support a step further, you can freely join my Patreon or become a channel member, with several added benefits. With that out of the way, enjoy today's content. The vast majority of people are all too familiar with conspiracy theories, ranging from aliens, Area 51, the moon landing being faked, to more absurd and downright hilarious ones like 5G towers, QAnon, and vaccines causing autism. All in all, everyone who went on the internet was confronted by one or more conspiracy theories. The vast majority of these conspiracy theories originate from English-speaking parts of the world, primarily the United States, and a few foreign conspiracies being translated to English and spreading all around the world. These conspiracy theories don't only focus on the modern world, instead there are also conspiracies tied to certain historical periods. Probably the most famous historical conspiracy is that Adolf Hitler somehow managed to escape Berlin and make it to Argentina, where he is either alive to this day or passed away in the Latin nation. However, numerous conspiracy theories originating in foreign nations majority of the time don't have the opportunity to spread throughout the world, and they are only known to the locals. Today I would like to present one of these conspiracy theories, which never had the chance to spread around in English, and that would be the second Tito theory. The theory goes that sometime in his life, Josip Broz Tito was replaced by an imposter, wanting to achieve a certain objective in the socialist nation, and that the Tito everyone knew and loved was, in fact, not Tito himself. While growing up in Bosnia, I was introduced to this conspiracy for the first time while I was in primary school, with almost all of my classmates talking about this grand conspiracy theory, but I was never really interested in it, until a few weeks ago, the theory suddenly popped into my head, and since Bosnia is my mother tongue, I feel like it would be a good idea to present this conspiracy theory for the first time to the public in the English language. I will be going through the conspiracy theory in as much detail as possible, and presenting the arguments for it, and then, in the end, I will give my personal opinion on the matter, if it is reasonable or ludicrous. A few years ago, the FBI declassified a very interesting document from the 1950s and made it public. This document was written by a man called John Markul. In this document, Markul states that he had met Tito two times in 1954, and was convinced that the man he had met was not the same Tito he talked to over 30 years ago. According to Markul himself, he had first met Tito in 1925, and even his father had met Tito around that time as well, and even he states that the Tito today was far different from the man he had once met. While Markul was talking with Tito in 1954, the biggest difference that made him question his real identity was the fact that the Tito he had met had 10 fingers, and could excellently play the piano, but according to Markul, the real Tito was missing two fingers on his left hand, which he had lost during his time as a locksmith, something Markul's father himself even confirms. But the number of fingers was not the only thing Markul noticed different on the marshal, and he would go on to list more differences in the document. Quote, Furthermore, Markul asserted that the real Tito, known to him as Josip Broz, was about 180 centimeters tall, and that the man he met in 1953 was only about 160. He also added that he noticed that the man he met in 1953 had a slight Russian accent and spoke in a soft voice, while the Tito he knew spoke on a much harsher voice. Marco claims that the real Tito was not healthy and had tuberculosis and that he disappeared in 1937 when he was in Russia." End quote. As we are all aware, from 1936 to 1938, Joseph Stalin would initiate the Great Purge, with the aim of eliminating a possible opposition. It is a fact that there were several Yugoslav communist officials in Russia at that time, and that several of them got liquidated. But according to Markul, the real Tito was also in Russia at that time, and that the KGB murdered him, then have a Russian agent take his identity. 
and that it was this agent he had met during his visit, the same agent who was leading Yugoslavia at that very moment, posing as Tito. The second time Markol met Tito in Zagreb, he also had a conversation with Aleksandar Rankovic, who was the deputy prime minister. In that conversation, Markol had brought up his suspicions about Tito and directly said that the man leading Yugoslavia was an imposter. But suspiciously, Rankovic dismissed all of these suspicions and never allowed the topic of Tito to surface in their conversation again. The document states, quote, during both conversations with Rankovic, Markul, he claims, told him about his suspicions, citing as evidence the lack of fingers in the real Tito. In both cases, Rankovic told him that he should not worry about these things, but rather enjoy his visit to Yugoslavia. Then Rankovic changed the subject and did not allow Markul to talk about Tito again." End quote. Markul further states that he has a sister living in Zagreb, and that when he visited her, he pointed out his suspicions regarding Tito. His sister actually acknowledged this, also stating that she shares his suspicions that the man leading Yugoslavia was not in fact the real Tito. After his visit to Yugoslavia, Markul returned to the United States and went to the FBI in order to document to them what he had noticed. Along with this, the FBI also interviewed Markul. It would seem that even the FBI was convinced of Markul's suspicions to the point that they had this document classified until recently. If you want to check out the entire 10-page document for yourself, I will leave a link to the document down in the description in the sources. Let's go back to one more interesting thing Markul had mentioned, Tito's Russian accent. There were, and still are, quite a few discussions questioning whether Tito really was a Yugoslav, and the NSA also took a keen interest in this debate as well. A document by the NSA that was also later on declassified was called, Is Yugoslav President Tito Really a Yugoslav? In this four-page document, the NSA would extensively analyze Tito's quote-unquote foreign accent. The document states that his phonological and morphological features in his speech were analyzed, and that his foreign accent cannot be explained by advanced age. Again, I will leave a link to the full document down below. The document eventually comes to the conclusion that the way Tito pronounces certain words in his accent is completely alien to Serbo-Croatian, and that the way he speaks he either had a Russian or Polish accent. Interestingly enough, the NSA and Markul weren't the only ones who noticed Tito's accent, but it was also noticed by Serbian Chetnik leader Draža Mihailović. Apparently, after meeting Tito in 1941, Mihailović was instantly convinced that Tito was in fact a Russian due to his accent. The NSA document concludes with these words, quote, in view of the above, a logical way to account for Tito's speech would be to assume that a non-Yugoslav, perhaps a Russian or a Pole, assumed Josip Bro's identity. The substitution would have taken place before World War II, because already in 1941 Mihailovic noticed Tito's pronunciation. The most likely time for this substitution would have been the late 1930s, when Tito was leading a clandestine life and was still relatively unknown." End quote. From the information provided to us, the story goes that the real Tito was purged in Russia sometime in 1937, and that his identity was taken over by a Russian agent wanting to cement Russia's influence over the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. And ever since World War II, Yugoslavia was led by this Russian agent, posing as the man everyone knew as Tito. But the majority of you already probably saw a giant contradiction in this theory, which does not go along with the events that took place in Yugoslavia after World War II. This would be the famous Tito-Stalin split, which ultimately significantly deteriorated the relationship between Tito and Stalin, which led to Yugoslavia pursuing an independent foreign and domestic policy from the Soviet Union. This should be a clear open and shut case then. If Tito was really a Russian agent, then the split would have never happened. But Markul actually mentions this in the FBI document, and his explanation is that the entire split was a lie, designed to fool the Western powers to give aid to Yugoslavia, since Yugoslavia was in a very bad spot economically. But in my personal opinion, 
I don't think this argument holds that much water, because we are aware that when the United States wanted to extend the Marshall Plan to the Eastern Bloc, Stalin outright refused and blocked this proposal. So it's very unlikely that Stalin would accept this whole scheme, especially if it involved Yugoslavia getting Western aid. But even if we dismiss Markle's point about the split, it still leaves a lot of unanswered questions regarding Tito. Markle's description of the differences in the FBI document, Raja Mihailovich claiming he was Russian after hearing his accent, and the NSA document that extensively investigates Tito's foreign accent. All three of these points are not particularly easy to disprove, especially since they were classified documents. So, here is my final verdict on this conspiracy. Was Josip Broz Tito in reality an imposter who took over his identity? It's possible. I wouldn't say I am 100% convinced of the theory, since there definitely are a few holes in it if we look at the historical events that took place. On the other hand, however, the evidence expressed by the two documents is not particularly easy to dismiss, especially an NSA document detailing Tito's lack of a Serbo-Croatian accent. But in the end, I would say that it is up to you to answer that big question. Was Tito really replaced or not?